The historic UFO case of the Reed family was issued a valet classification of CE4. This case has many layers and remains one of the few CE4 cases to be mentioned within the walls of the United Nations. The evidence, radiation, magnetic fields, a polygraph test and witnesses, all documented by those in law enforcement. Tom's father, attorney Howard Reed, was murdered on October the 2nd, the same day that their case was mentioned at the United Nations. During this documentary, Thomas will take you on an intensely personal journey out of this world. From his family's first encounter in 1954, the tragic murder of his father and doctor who both went public with their evidence, right up to his brother's most recent encounter in 2009. What you're about to see will take you on many twists and turns, and is up to you to draw your own conclusions. What you're about to hear is true and documented. Later on that night, my mother actually saddled up horses and put the floodlights on around the, the property and, and searched the property by horseback. And um, my grandmother was actually on the front porch and she suddenly saw us there and she was there for quite some time with the floodlights. So how we got there, she doesn't remember. And I was on a little bit of a hill and there was a stable. We had a red stable that housed uh, maybe four or five horses. And I was not far from the stable and my younger brother was maybe uh, 50, 60 yards in front of me where it leveled off at our driveway in front of the home. And I was just staring at him. And I started to, I remember seeing him even today and walking down this little bit of an incline and my mother came running out of the house and kind of, you know, grabbed him and grabbed me and brought us into the home and sat us at a kitchen table. And um, she, uh, you know, wiped us off and, and so on and uh, aspirin and juice. And then the, um, my mother referenced it as, as the uh, car just kind of, um, came to a stall and um, went off to the right side of the road. We could hear uh, stones, I guess, you know, uh, pebbles and what have you, banging on the gas tank and clink the clanking sound that you'd hear on the bottom of a car. And they coasted off to the right side of a road. And um, I remember this little patch of field and, and, and trees out there, and I saw like a, like a little yellowish glow on it. I'm not sure why I was looking this way. Everyone else was really looking this way. I was looking over this way and maybe just looking around and I noticed that glow. I don't know where it came from. And um, then it got just dead silent as if uh, like someone just turned the volume off on life itself. It was just dead silent. And then there was this eruption of crickets and cadians. Everything it was just loud for years after that. When I would hear that, it would bother me. Even today, I think it creeps me out a little bit. And and it was just loud. I mean, it was not just loud. It was, it was loud. And um, I do a PowerPoint. I'll crank it up because that's what it sounded like. And that's the last thing I remember in the car. No one else was responding. Um, I was awake or came to. Um, saw my grandmother through the windshield. I jumped out of the car and I ran up to her, but she was kind of walking kind of, uh, I use the word, the word aimlessly because I'm not really sure any other way to, to word it, but she was, it, there were, you know, double lined, orange lines, and she was almost in the middle of these orange lines, and left, right, and, and um, she, by the time I got to her, she was walking into this little store. First thing you do is you look for patterns. Right. And September is a pattern. Right. But we can't make out what the pattern means. Huh. All we can make from this is that it's genetic, because it happened with my mother in 1954 in Maine. It happened, um, to my brother and I when we were children, and something seems to have happened with our kids when they were young, and now they test off the charts, and then this happens in 2009 when my brother's child is turning six. Now, that's not something I put together, that was something my son put together, but that's the only pattern that we see. But why the 30 year span in between? What, you know, except that we weren't having children? And so my mother um, describes it as she, uh, she woke up uh, maybe two o'clock in the morning and thought she heard some squeaks on the floor, what have you, and uh, immediately saw these, uh, she worded them as pudgy, fat-looking uh, creatures around her bed. Um, there were some arcing lights in the room, and, uh, and she felt like she was confined to the inside of a mannequin, except that her hands would move and her feet could move. And she tried to pull.
pull herself away um, from what was happening. There was, she was being like uh, corralled by, by people. And she tried to grab the blanket and pull, but it just bunched up in her hand. She couldn't actually use her arm to pull. She could only remember the whole blanket bunching up in her hands. And, um, and something was going on with her. She doesn't remember in detail, but she remembers being absolutely horrified. And, um, and it was, that remained like that for, her, for hours until she actually saw the light come in in the, in the morning um, through the window. And she heard birds, and, and next thing she knows, she, she sat up and she was um, sick to her stomach and nauseated and, uh, and uh, back almost in shock in some respects because it had, was going on for hours. In March 30th, 2009, my brother was actually leaving a, a movie with Norm and uh, had just dropped him off at the house and pulled out and was heading back towards Brownsburg where he saw an orange ball off to the left side of his car, he said. And he, he followed it and um, uh, orangey red, I guess. And um, he didn't get too much uh, further down the road and found himself into a, in a field and, um, and uh, just basically lost an hour and a half. I mean, it was really choppy for him. He doesn't remember as much on this as he did in the 60s. And uh, he, he had mud on his boots. The truck was way off. Uh, it was a very flat area of property. It was at an intersection. It was kind of off the road. And um, he felt very disoriented. Um, he called me, actually, um, about an hour later. And um, went to start the car. The, there were some electronics that were damaged on the instrument panel. Um, uh, things were acting up um, and because we had some contacts and, and, uh, and so on and so forth we uh, you know we made some calls and and, um, and uh, to call the local authorities to find out you know what happened you know and and of course the, they came out uh, they wouldn't take a police report because it wasn't a crime <clears throat> and actually my law firm actually is trying to find out why they they give us a copy of a statement but um, you know, there was obviously something something happened. So they, they did come out, Plain Colo's car came out. Um, some investigators came out originally um, from the Bass Aerospace crew, um, I guess the funded team from Robert Bigelow, I guess it was. And then, um, you know, MUFON had their star team come down and there was a Detective White investigated it. Uh, there was uh, Debbie Cobble, who the book Intruders was written about. She came out and investigated it. My brought her own camera, kind of scanned everything with that and saw the compass spinning. And she gave me a copy of that. And uh, Glenn Means, uh, Stuart, uh, Stuart Hill, there were a lot of people. He can present his documentation and he can show it and people will then have a, a hopefully a new respect for what he has to say because his documentation will have been authenticated, certified, substantiated uh, you know, by a court of law. and. To our knowledge, that's, this is the first time that it's ever or will have ever gone in that direction.